Hello, Anthony. Hello. We're talking today about first-time penalty abatement. That's right. Now, one thing we already know is that penalties and interest can accrue very, very quickly on a tax debt. Right. And a question we get from a lot of clients is, can we have the IRS forgive these penalties and interest? Right. And this is the thing that people need to know. Uh, First-time penalty abatement is easier than they think. Mm-hmm. Um, but not all penalty abatement is easy. But there is a first-time penalty abatement that pretty much everyone's going to qualify for something. Usually. Something. Something, usually. Uh, so that's uh, what we're going to be talking about today, is yep. sort of how the different penalty abatements work and how there's probably one, and for most people, and really for one, most people that have a one year they, they got behind on, it's real. this is really for you. And the thing to know is the IRS isn't going to tell you this. No. They'll take those penalties. Hey, thanks for Thank the money. You. you probably didn't have to pay us. Uh, so that's really what we want to do is help people not you know pay um, more than they need to to exactly. the IRS. Now, the first thing we'll quickly touch on is reasonable cause. Right. Okay. Abatement of penalties is more likely than abatement of interest. That's right. Okay. So first choice is reasonable cause. The IRS threshold for what constitutes reasonable cause is pretty high. Yeah, it's very high to guarantee. What I would say is a very high bar to guarantee that you would find reasonable cause to abate penalties. And when you're, when you're, when you're filing a reasonable cause, it's usually for many, many years. For many years of uh, things that got caught up, and you know, you you know, we 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 sometimes we have fun trying to imagine the scenario mm-hmm. that the IRS would say, okay, they cannot deny you reasonable cause belief, but they, they kind of will. But then on similar cases, you try again, they do, uh, somewhat arbitrary. So you know, something like, well, uh, I needed to get cancer medication for my dad, the person who raised me, and while I was on my way to get cancer medication, I was run over by a car and I was in a coma for the three years that I didn't file my returns. And there I would say, you'll probably <laughs> get it. Not a guarantee. Yes. Um, but let's just say now that now a different scenario is um, like this. Um, you know what? I just didn't feel like paying my taxes on time. Uh, but I only did it for one year. Mm-hmm. I only did it one year. And um, yeah, I guess every year I pay my taxes. And then this year, I'm like, you know what? I got a different idea. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, in that case, guess what? You'll get first time penalty relief because no it's really, yeah, because it's really not your facts and circumstances. Like, well, they, it's really not anything to do with what's inside your head, why you didn't do it. Yeah. You could have been doing it because I'm like, I think maybe the IRS will forget about me. You know, that, that could have been your reason. Um, but it's really like, well, no, I was in compliance for the three years prior and I've been in compliance. Um, so there, I qualify. Oh, yeah, there it is. Bye. Wow. Yep. All right. So. First time penalty abatement. That's really what we want to talk about. That's right. Okay. So the IRS will abate the penalties for failure to file, failure to pay, and in the case of businesses, failure to deposit penalties associated with the taxpayer's first year of noncompliance. Right. Right. Now, for first time penalty abatement, you have to meet two conditions. Okay. Number one. The taxpayer was not required to file a return or has no prior penalties for the preceding three years to the one in which the requesting first time penalty abatement and the taxpayer has filed or filed a valid extension for all currently required returns and paid or has arranged to pay any tax due. Mm, yeah. So you can basically, have you been good for three years? Okay. Yeah, then it's probably going to work okay. um, on, on those penalties. So that's really what you need to know. Here's the thing. What, 95% of people who are entitled to this first-time penalty relief don't get it. That's crazy. So we don't want you, all of you people out there, we don't want you paying it. So really, th- and it's not that hard to get it. You know, of course, there's going to be a lovely call to the IRS, Ooh. but it's not that hard to get it. You can call, um, in, in order to get it, you could write for it, you could call the penalty hotline, or you even could call uh, the, the automated collection systems, mm-hmm. uh, ACS. Uh, and uh, you know what? Here's the thing. If you get denied it for some reason and you don't think it's right, call back. No kidding. Yeah, just say, oh, hey, looking for first-time penalty abatement. Um, oh, yeah. It's not yeah. like they keep a record of who... Well, they kind of do, but they kind of don't. So okay. it's just something that we've seen kind of works. And so, you know, this is something, you know, we've been doing for our clients. It came out in 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, so not everybody is hip to it. Not every practitioner is hip to it. And certainly not every taxpayer is because 95% of the people are paying for it. So really, you, what you want to do is ask for first-time penalty abatement. And when you're calling the IRS to make a, a payment arrangement, mm-hmm. just say, hey, can I get first-time penalty abatement? And they'll take that first year. You'll get at least that penalty. You know, let's just say... You owe money for several years. Well, that first year you owe, well, you, you some kind of had to be in compliance for the three years previous. So mm-hmm. that's why we say pretty much for everybody, there will be one year 
that they're entitled to a penalty refund. Now, if somebody settles taxes for far, far less uh, with an offer and compromise or currently non collectible status or you know partial payment installment agreement, well, what does it matter? Mm-hmm. You're not paying back the entire debt anyway. This is really for people who they you know they're going to be repaying the IRS and just want it to be a little bit less. Now, one interesting thing about interest is I believe interest to, to for the IRS to abate interest. Mm-hmm actually requires an act of Congress. I read that somewhere. I don't know if it's true, but I read somewhere. It sounded credible. Um, was uh, it on the internet? No, it was. Probably true. <laughs> it was not on the internet. It was in uh, uh, one of my horn books. Um, uh, now I've gotten myself all distracted there. Well, what I will say quickly is that we've had offers accepted for up to $10,000 over the phone. Hey, first time penalty abatement, $10,000. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So we don't know yet if there's a ceiling where you have to do it in writing or right. What well, accept yeah, over well, the phone. It can be, you know, probably anything over twenty thousand dollars. You know, you might want to do that in writing, mm-hmm. uh, even though it's really not, you know, a facts and circumstances test. But it's not bad, you know, if you have good facts, you would just say them. And if you have bad facts, you're like, hey, just hey. you know, I'm a taxpayer. I made a mistake, which is true, mm-hmm. right? True. Uh, just seeing if you know you can grant me this first time penalty relief. If you did say, yeah, I was just. Um, thinking I could get away with it. Don't say that. Right. I made a mistake in thinking I could get away with it, but I know that compliance is what I want to do all the time, and I want to take advantage of this. Oh, this is back to the interest. That's where I got distracted. It takes an act of Congress to abate interest, mm-hmm. but when you're, you're, your interest is running on your penalties, so when you remove the penalty, you're removing that interest component to it as well, so you're removing that interest to it. Okay. So that's also a little bit of a benefit. And even if it's been a number of years since a taxpayer's been compliant with their filing, um, this still could be a useful tool in reducing the balance to the IRS. Mm -hmm. Um, While you only have three years to request a refund from the IRS, first-time penalty abatement operates as a credit to your account. And there's not bound by IRS limitations on refunds. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yep, my I God, thought that's that great. was awesome. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of people who've probably been paying the IRS for years and years and years, and they're getting near the end. Well, you know, if you've been, you know, had a huge debt, and now you're down to something like three, four thousand dollars or something. Hey, maybe give a call. Maybe you're done. Maybe this is really great news for you to say, hey, yeah, don't worry about the rest of the payments. Hey, or here's a little check for you too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then last but not least, even if a taxpayer's first year of noncompliance was ten or more years ago, and the balance associated with that tax year has been completely paid off, the IRS can abate the penalties associated with the tax and credit a recent liability. Oh my god. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's like so no wonder why they're not telling anyone about right, this. Right, I know. We right. This, right. Isn't that weird? They they make like, a law, right? They make a law, but it's like, well, that benefits taxpayers. So So we'll just do a little press release. We'll just and never small ever little ever press release. It again. We're not gonna tell you how it works, right, because this actually benefits you. Right. And then last question, how much can you save? Well it depends. There you go. You know, who knows what your penalties are? I would say that I know that a lot of people think their penalties might be more than they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes they overthink what they actually can save, but you know, it, it's really, it's a nice little thing, you know, is if you're, if you're near the end, uh, it, it can be a real benefit and yeah. it just, you know, sort of helps you maybe give you a little bit of inspiration to get the thing paid off. But it's not always a certain percentage, not a certain no, dollar No, no, because it's, yeah, it depends on what your underpayment was, what, what your, how long it was that you didn't uh, file. Gotcha. Yeah. So remember, it's not. Those stupid taxes I didn't pay. It's, oh, I forgot to pay my taxes. I forgot to pay my taxes, and I love compliance. <laughs> Please <laughs> well, I really want to be compliant. There you go. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. You can like and comment below. You can also subscribe to our channel for awesome tax updates. Thanks for watching. IRS Medic, the law offices of Parent and Parent, LLP. Real tax attorneys for tough tax problems.